What's going on guys, Mitch here from Dumb Money Day Trading. I'm going to take you through this GameStop seg, explain to you exactly uh, what is going on uh, and how we're going to make money uh, and the backstory to it all. Um, yeah, I mean it's been a crazy, crazy, crazy uh, situation. I mean this is going to be a story of greed and deceit. This is going to be a story of heroics and, and bravery and camaraderie. This is going to be a story of David and Goliath, the 300 Spartans. This is going to be a story of Neo and the Matrix. Uh, that's how crazy it is. Uh, so this next 10 minutes I'm going to take you guys through everything. I'm going to teach you guys more about the markets than you've learned in your four years at university. Uh, more practical knowledge here in the next 10 minutes um, than I, I, I don't even know. Uh, unless you're already a very, very experienced trader. I doubt uh, the information presented here um, is relevant or, or has been used in, in your everyday life in your trading. So let's get to it. Uh, so news is, is talking about GameStop. Everything is, is going crazy right now. Uh, why should you listen to me? Um, yeah, I mean I've been trading GameStop for a little while now. This is my returns from this week. On uh, my screen over here, 1200%, uh, right? Uh, let me just zoom in for you guys there. There you go, 1200%. Uh, that's from um, <laughs> my trade from uh, earlier this week until now, which is, uh, well, the close of Friday. Um, yeah, so I'm going to explain to you guys. The breakdown, what I see happening for GameStop. I might be right, I might be wrong. This is not financial advice. Uh, grab your favorite drink, grab a snack. Um, and if you listen to my wife, she'll tell you I'm probably wrong most of the time. And a few times that I am right, it's because those times I actually agree with her. So take this with a grain of salt. This is what I'm going to do uh, moving forward. This is my understanding of the situation. Um, and obviously, this is my return this week. So follow if you want, don't follow if you want. Uh, but listen closely because this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. Don't take it from me. Uh, we can also listen to um, our good friend, Michael J. Burry, right? Dr. Michael J. Burry, he was um, the gentleman featured in the movie The Big Short on Netflix. Here he says there can never be another GME. Nothing else is, was even close to a shorted as a 100 plus percent float, right? So this is the guy who made billions of dollars on shorting the housing market back in 08. Uh, he saw it when everyone else on Wall Street was just throwing their risk management out the window, blatant fraud, uh, no one saw it coming except for this guy and a couple other people. Watch the big short on Netflix, get a good picture of what's going on. Situation out there, back in May for GameStop, it was already out of hand. Um, he was already going long for quite a while um, and he lent out his shares to short sellers which means uh, short sellers are the people that uh, make money when the stock price goes down and so basically what they do is they borrow the shares today they sell it today um, and they hope that the shares go down in price and they'll rebuy the shares at a lower cost basis and then return them right so let's say the shares are 20 bucks and then they borrow the shares from me they sell it so now they have twenty dollars in their pocket they wait the shares go down to fifteen to ten dollars and they buy back in at ten dollars and they return my shares to me and that spread between twenty and ten that's their profit that's their take home right so that's how short sellers make money so dr uh burry here he lent out his shares of gamestop and then when he called them back in he's like i don't want to lend my shares anymore I call them back in it took his brokerages weeks to get his shares that's how hard it is to find shares and this is before the short squeeze even happened this was back in may and I'm going to tell you why uh, this should never have happened in the first place. But we already know um, right here, right? Short float over 100% of the float. That means these short sellers were borrowing and selling counterfeit shares into the market, right? So these shares didn't exist, but they were so greedy that they wanted to keep on shorting and shorting and shorting and shorting um, these shares and just keep on selling these shares to depress the price. And so GameStop... I'm not too sure if you guys have heard or, or know of, of the, the store there. They are a brick and mortars retailer. They sell uh, like video games, video games um, and, and accessories and different things like that. 
and obviously it's it's the pandemic right all brick and mortar retail retailers have been hit super hard so these short sellers come along like this this company is is going to go under or they're going to be super weak they're not going to be able to survive the pandemic so let's short them so they started shorting the stock from like 20 something dollars all the way down to like three or four dollars right so from twenty dollars down to three or four dollars that is an amazing amazing return right that is like a 90 something percent return on their investment awesome what did they do next they weren't satisfied with like a 90 percent return and so they wanted to short more so they created these counterfeit shares and sold them into the market to depress the price even more they weren't satisfied with the 90 percent uh, profit they wanted to drive this company into the ground um, and what is the point of that um, and so if the company goes bankrupt while you short them you don't have to pay taxes right so taxes on, on capital gains in the US are like 40% or whatever I have no idea it's crazy I, I live in Canada Toronto um, but that's the situation right so they didn't want to take their 90% and go home um, they just wanted to crush this company bankrupt it send its employees out on the street and not pay taxes on their gains um, so this is crazy 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 amount of greed out there uh, and so this caught the attention of a lot of people because how can you short more than 100% of what is out there so that created this entire situation their greed actually caused this atomic bomb to build um, in the financial markets and we saw the accumulation of what what happened this week right it was crazy 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 blatant illegal activities happening this week the minute these shorts understood that they screwed up royally um and let, let me take you through the, the the situation right um so we have a couple things happening in the meantime firstly we have call sellers so calls are options that allow you to buy a stock at a particular price point um, and so you can buy a call option for like eighty dollars strike price which means you're allowed to buy the stock at eighty dollars at any point in time if you exercise these options and so people are selling these call options these institutions um, and as you sell call options obviously you may or may not need to deliver those shares but as the share price goes up uh, these call option sellers they need to buy the shares to make sure they can fulfill their end of the contract and we see here on and the screen over here the price of GameStop kept on going up and up and up and every time it surpassed the maximum call option strike price we would see a huge squeeze upwards right this is known as a gamma squeeze and that's what we're going through right now which is a gamma squeeze because the price of GameStop have, has continually gone upwards which means every all the institutions that have sold call options they now have to acquire these shares to deliver to the people that bought the options right and so this is called a, a gamma squeeze so every time we surpass the top option strike pricing this is known as the maximum pain threshold we see a, a huge jump um, in GameStop pricing right boom boom and so this is what I think is gonna happen from Friday to Monday GameStop actually closed at 320 something dollars which is higher than the strike price of 320 which is the highest call option available as of Wednesday of last week so on Monday we should have a nice gap up as we did last week now let me take you through the events of last week and, and why the entire country the, the entire world is up in arms against these Wall Street hedge funds right I just want to say not all hedge funds are are, are bad right um, it's and not even the employees of the hedge funds right so I have people on both sides of the fence and I just want to put that out there but the decision makers the ones calling the shots allowing this risk management to just go out the door just pure greed and gluttony um, out there and and so the guy from Limit, limitless that movie he said it best right there are no safeguards against human greed and we saw this time and time again 2008 financial crisis the banks just got so so greedy putting crap mortgages into these bonds and just selling them off as CDOs uh, collapse our entire economy what happened nothing the government bailed them out and so no one learns anything because they understand that the government will bail them out it's gonna be a, this, this is gonna happen again right so no one really gets punished nothing really happens it's gonna happen again and again and again um, 
and and we see like these big hedge funds they're they're going to continue doing this um big policy makers are on their side right uh they they get they get a lot of uh, donations for their campaigns they got a lot of speaking events um and that's all to build relationships and that rapport with the hedge funds and the politicians and the regulators uh so the regulators even though they should be working for us might not be the case right so we'll see how this pans out this has gotten so much publicity um maybe maybe this one time um the the little guy is going to win but let's see so we're, we're going through this this scenario right here where GameStop gapped up on Monday. So on Friday it closed um, around, what, let me just check the dates really quickly. We're talking about here the 22nd. So I'm just going to zoom in on the charts right here. So this is the 22nd of Friday. The stock closed at around uh, what is this? Sixty-three dollars, and then on Monday it opened at ninety something dollars. Right, that was the gamma squeeze that happened on Friday. The options expired way, way um, in the money, which means option sellers had to buy up the, the shares to deliver to their clients the next day, and boom, that's why you have that gap up, that pressure on the pricing right here. And then this continued to happen, continued to happen, gamma squeeze, gamma squeeze, gamma squeeze, boom! We have this huge run up here, all the way up to 224, once again, gamma squeeze, up the next day, all the way to a high of three, almost 360, right? And we see that GameStop bouncing off all these lines that we have here pre-drawn on the chart, so we can actually understand where it's going to bounce each and every time. Um, and, and so the charts just play out almost perfectly. Uh, we don't know why things are going to happen. We just know when they're going to happen and where they're going to happen, right? Top line here, fib, boom. Huge resistance here. We already knew there's a resistance going to be here. Uh, but this here was a cr crazy, crazy story. Um, so GameStop continued going forward and forward and forward. So this year is kind of like Neo. He's in the Matrix and he's training with Morpheus. And then... Uh, and then the, the operator so so we're like the guys we're like the operators we're watching the stream the screen we're seeing the charts bounce up and down we're seeing the numbers all the shares going through ask bid ask bid ask bid price is going through and we can't believe what's going on and then we're, we're looking at the screen and we're like we're like mouse in the nebuchadnezzar when, when they just picked up neo and he's training and mouse is like i've never seen brain signals this fast before this is amazing and then neo's fighting more morpheus in the training room and neo's like I know Kung Fu and this is boom this is blasting off here and then we get all this crazy stuff happening Neo is like training and getting better and better and better and then it gets to a point right here this is this is a short ladder attack by the hedge fund so the hedge funds what they do is they will sell it to themselves very very quickly uh, when there's low volume trading so hedge fund A will sell it to hedge fund B and then hedge fund B will sell it to a lower price of hedge fund A and just drive the price down. Um, and, and this is what they do to try to panic holders of the stock and to get them to sell to the hedge funds. Be the hedge funds want to collect the shares all the way down here and come back up. Uh, so these are the short attacks from the different sellers here. And this is like the hedge funds coming in. Uh, this is like Neo running face to face into the agents. And Trinity is like Neo, Neo run. No one has ever beaten an agent before. And Neo, he just turns around. He's like, no. And then he goes to fight the agent, right? Boom, that's right here. He's getting his ass whooped. And then he's like, no. And he starts to believe. This is because no one was selling shares to the hedge fund shorters. Everyone down here, they just held the line. Right at that point, there was a bid-ask spread, right? So the bid is how much people are willing to buy for. The ask is what we are willing to sell for. At this very point in time, the bid was 183 the ask was five thousand dollars that means no one was willing to sell shares under five thousand dollars at this point this is why we stopped right here um that's amazing this is what we talk about diamond hands right diamond hands um everyone who is a shareholder of gamestop is not selling in fact we're buying more and more and more and more putting pressure on the stock 
trying to get to a short squeeze and what the short squeeze is which it has not happened yet is that the short sellers have to buy back in and if the shares go up they're gonna have to buy back in um, and which propels this price even higher right there's over a hundred percent short float which means a hundred percent of the shares need to be returned and that's gonna blast the stock price up we haven't had a short squeeze yet um, and we probably won't until the end of next week right now all we're experiencing is gamma squeezes the shorts have actually dug their feet into the ground and they said we are not going to sell our position we are not going to lose this war no matter what um, and so Neo is just fighting the agents right he's like I believe boom ask price five thousand dollars you are not taking my shares and we see here right away people coming in and buying the dip because they know the short squeeze is coming what happens next right so he whoops agent smith's ass and then now we're in we're in like the second movie he's like flying around doing all this superman stuff so he, he rocked agent smith at the very beginning and then agent smith changes right he he's now outside of the matrix he's like his own type of thing this is where the hedge funds like melvin capital they got bailed out by their big brothers uh 0.72 and citadel and so Citadel is actually a market maker. Generally, when you short a stock and you have counterfeit shares, this is actually legal, believe it or not. Um, you can have, you can short sell counterfeit shares, but you have to return the shares in three days. This whole situation changed right here. Boom. They got their big brother to come in who owns a significant portion of Melvin Capital, Citadel. And Citadel is a market maker. What market makers are is they don't have to pay, they don't have to play by those same rules. They actually get to, to work by their own rules they have the authority to create liquidity in the market so they can actually sell counterfeit shares and they don't have to return those shares until 21 days later so the whole game just changed and the whole um uh, connections and the networks in the back of just totally changed right here amazing amazing squeeze all the way up to a high of like 515 520 whatever that is all of a sudden boom the markets fall out from underneath us no one is allowed to buy in North America I was trying to trade in the morning I was streaming with my my, my subscribers there boom couldn't log into TD Bank all my streamers none of them could log in either right they're all across North America all across Canada all across the US I have people watching me no one could log in no one could trade and then um, some some brokers like Robinhood which is partially owned by Citadel that's what I hear Robinhood actually instead of just shutting down and not letting you trade the only thing you could do is sell so you couldn't buy it all all you can do is sell so they wanted people who own the shares of GameStop to panic sell right so I don't know if they made that decision unilaterally I don't know if they received pressure from Citadel because Citadel is a part owner of Robinhood and Robinhood actually sells um, order flow to the hedge funds so the hedge funds have one step ahead of all the regular traders that are using their platform who knows um, why that was but blatantly illegal you cannot only allow one side of a trade whatever the case is from the stock dropped from 483 all the way down to a low of 115 that's because only these hedge fund shorts were allowed to trade everyone else was locked out of the system uh, whether you were in Canada or the US regardless of what brokerage you used and what's even worse is Robinhood only allows sells and so people were, were panic selling uh, they could log in so these are what's known as paper hands right they can't hold anything you get shredded so quickly um, but blatantly illegal activity the entire market shut down um, and this is pretty much when Agent Smith right he's outside the matrix now he's on his own standalone and he's like chaining people with agent Smith he's like Boom, and you see them morph and then he's like I'm agent Smith and then the other guy's like no I'm agent Smith he's like we're agent Smith and so this is like totally crazy outside of the system um, that the, the entire market did this and that we only had to sell and then the call for help went out right so this is when all the machines are attacking the Nebuchadnezzar there we're being attacked from all sides it's crazy and we put out a call for help to our international allies Germany rose up Asia rose up everyone here bought the dip because no one could buy in North America which was crazy this is an international battleground 
for the little guy. Everyone right now remembers what happened in 2008 and there's no way we're letting this happen again today, right? Um, and the 2008 mortgage crisis housing market affected everyone worldwide, which is why there's such a huge, huge call to arms right now, which is massive. Cry for help went out right here. Asia, Germany bought the dip. And, and also, good to know guys, is at night times when we're sleeping, it's Asia and Germany driving up these prices. Um, and then we're supposed to can continue that, um, right? So we all like this stock, we all buy it because we all know a gamma squeeze is coming. We all know a short squeeze is coming. This is the play. Um, international cry for help went out and they rose up. They came to the table and they went hard, right? So they pushed the price all the way back up from 118, 112. So even if I had money here, which I did and I wanted to buy, I could not log in, right? None of the brokers over here work. Um, in Asia and Europe, they were still open, so these guys logged in. They bought the dip and pushed it all the way back up to 248, 250, which is amazing, right? So the stock went up 120, 25 dollars, which is 100 percent from where it was at, at 116, and now it's at 250. Amazing, amazing work. Um, so cry for help went out, um, and right here on this day was international outcry a foul play everyone was up in arms let me let me flip you through the tweets we got oh oh actually right here on this squeeze they actually sh had to shut down the markets because someone sold a partial share for two thousand six hundred dollars a share which is amazing that's why i'm telling you guys ten thousand dollars is not a meme this is my price target, probably even higher than 10000 a share. I'm going to see where this goes. I believe the short squeeze is going to be massive. We haven't seen a short squeeze yet, and I'll tell you why in a bit. Boom, we got Chamath here, who is a self-made billionaire, came over as an immigrant to the United States. First job, flipping burgers, built his way up, now a billionaire. He's pretty much saying here, boom, all the money in 2008 was made by suits by identifying a market dislocation and exploiting it. In 2021, it was identified by retail traders, you and I, and exploiting it until the suits intervened, right? So it's always regulators and these big shots helping one another out. Um, it's okay uh, for us to lose money, but it's never okay for us to make more money than them, right? So, um, and then he talks here again, Facebook and Robinhood are the same. They trick you into thinking you're the customer, but in fact, you're the product. Um, and he talks about here Robinhood founders. He, he already knew that Robinhood was a sketch uh, app. They came to him for funding and he said no because he values integrity over anything else. We got Kevin O'Leary speaking out to about it. Um, and he said everyone is scared shitless that their short positions are going to get blown up. Everyone knows this is coming. These guys threw risk management out the door because of their greed. Um, and now they're paying for it. And then he even says, keep our markets free. They pretty much manipulated the market here. Um, no one was allowed to trade. If you were allowed to trade, you were only allowed to sell. Crazy, crazy stuff. Boom, we got Mark Cuban talking about Robin Hood and uh, interactive brokers, right? Interactive broker CEO actually went on live television and they said, why did you stop the, stop the markets? Why did you stop trading? He's like, to protect ourselves. These guys were going broke because these trades were so volatile. They were scared that they could not come up with the money to support these trades. That's how stressed the system is right now due to the greed of these hedge funds that took this massive short position on GameStop. These guys have put the financial system on the brink of collapse. Once again, right? No, they, they never learn. Um, they don't have the cash to enable trades at this scale, right? Mark Cuban again. Why does Wall Street have such an advantage over the little guy? The SEC. The SEC doesn't follow laws. They are, have legal precedents, which means they can sue you knowing you have no financial ability to fight back. Right? So, so once again, if you're the little guy, you don't have money to hire a good lawyer. You're going to get blown up in any type of lawsuit. Elon Musk backing us here. Game stonk. Because stonks only go up talking again here. Musk was shorted like crazy when Tesla first came out. He knows what happens when you get short attack. 
So he has no love for the shorts at all. He says here, you can't sell houses you don't own. You can't sell cars you don't own, but you can sell stocks that you don't own. That's crazy. Uh, but he says here, give them no respect. Get shorty, right? 300 Spartans, give them nothing. Take from them everything. And that's what we are going to do right here, right? So I originally came for the money, saw the move, took the play, made 1,200% in a couple days on my position. But after this, now I'm staying for the movement. And so is everyone else, right? So my, my hands turn to diamonds. So all of you paper hands out there, iron elo, silver, gold, whatever, low ass elos, hop on my back. We are going to go to the promised land together, carry you there myself. Friday, the brokerages that got flat, they came out and said, we are going to allow selling again. Let me let me zoom out for a minute to, to the 30. We're on the hourly. And so right here, Friday, we open. And at the beginning of Friday, Robinhood allowed you to buy five shares of GameStop. The price surged up. Price went to 414, which is higher than the highest call available on uh, on Wednesday, right? Immediately, it went from you're allowed to buy five shares of GameStop to you are now only allowed to buy three shares of GameStop. Boom, the price goes down, bounces off this fib line here. So all these lines are supports and resistances. We already knew they were coming. We just didn't know why it would bounce there, but we just knew it would bounce there. Boom, catches the bounce here. The buyers start winning again. All of a sudden, Robin Hood says, hey, you can no longer buy three shares of, of GameStop maximum today. You can only buy one share of GameStop maximum today. Boom, buying power decreases. And right here is a pivotal moment. Uh, right here was the short attack. And as we hit this fib line, once again, no more sellers. It was only the hedge funds selling to themselves and actually everyone else was buying. So the hedge funds were actually losing more and more and more and more shares every time they, they, they sold to one another. And right here at the end of the day was one more short attack. I'm going to zoom in here for you guys. 320 was the mark to, to, to beat. Right here at 350, right? So the market's closed at 4. Big short attack. And we had a very, very big whale step in and prop the price up to the close of 328. So we know now there's some very, very big money on the side of the retailer, which is amazing, right? Um, I don't know if they're doing it for altruistic um, intentions or or what, but this is where Neo comes in and he's doing a Superman thing. It's at the end of the third movie and the agents, the computer system is now afraid of Neo and he says to them, I don't know what's going to happen but I know something needs to change, right? We can coexist, but something needs to change. Uh, but through this entire time, these shorts, they do not want to let up their position. They rather let the world burn than to lose on this position. I'm going to show you what happens, right? So Melbourne Capital lost 53% in January, hurt by the short positions. How do you get out of short positions? So if you're holding a short position, your brokerage is going to want you to put up more collateral, right? Because your position now is under the water. It's negative by a huge, huge amount, right? They're shorting at like from $20 and now the stock price is 300 and something. Uh, but they actually saved themselves billions and billions of dollars uh, through this illegal activity over here, right? Because um, they actually rebought a lot of the shares down here along with our international kind of allies, right? International allies came in, bought it. These short hedge funds also bought it as well to catch the ride back up, which is cheaper than having to buy back in in the 300s. They bought back in at like the one something. So they say billions of dollars using this this um, illegal tactic and they're going to get a slap on the wrist. It's going to be like a couple million dollars uh, fine, but they're going to save billions of dollars in the, in the meantime. We've seen this happen time and time and time again. So. That's in the past, that doesn't matter. Uh, but what matters here is, this is how we're going to know if the short squeeze has happened or not. 
right now these hedge funds are liquidating their long positions to provide more collateral um, to their brokerages so that they can hold on to these massively losing short positions in GameStop, right? And so they'd rather let the entire world burn than to be like, hey guys, you know what? We F up. Uh, we're going to move on to the next trade, but they'd rather take the entire world down uh, with them. And once again, this is, I mean, this draws a question of, hey, do these guys think rationally or not? And so we see a lot of news coming out that they need to protect the retail investor because the retail investor doesn't understand uh, the risks that are involved. I would say these hedge funds don't understand the risks that are involved. How are you going to short a stock float over 100%? Even Kramer said, if you float a stock, if you short a stock more than 100% of the float, you are a moron. Kramer usually doesn't say anything I agree with except for this one time. So shout out to you, Kramer. Um, so this is why the entire market was down and will continue to be down until the short squeeze happens, right? So when the short squeeze happens, these guys are going to be done liquidating their long-term positions, getting back in, covering their shorts, right? So the S&P 500, the NASDAQ will stabilize, will no longer go down because these guys are no longer selling their positions. Maybe they have no more positions to sell because they've completely liquidated. That's the lookout. If you guys are not in GameStop, what you want to do is go short on the S&P 500 or go to cash because the market is going to bleed while this goes on. Once we find a bottom on the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, that is when the short squeeze is done. It might take a week, it might take two weeks, it might take three weeks. It depends on how much money these guys are willing to lose. It depends on how much interest these guys want to pay. Um, and I mean, now it's the ball is in our hands, right? So we own as retail traders that like the stock tons and tons of the shares internet and the institutions that own GameStop own ton and ton of the shares. So these hedge funds to buy back in, they have no choice to buy it at whatever price we set. My minimum, $10,000. How many shares do I own? I may or may not disclose in a later video. But this trade here will change a lot of people's lives, right? So there's a lot of people on both sides of this trade that are going to be affected. Employees of these hedge funds that had nothing to do with making the decision of these trades. Um, and employees of um, the other companies that, that put money into these hedge funds had nothing to do. But they're all going to bear the brunt of the decision maker's lack of risk management and greed, right? And, and that's just an issue here. People are going to get hurt on both sides of this trade. If you're a GameStop employee and if GameStop went down, you, you are going to get blown up. If you work for these hedge funds and these hedge funds get blown up, you're going to be out on the street as well, right? And so there is really no best solution to it except for to impose more regulation on these hedge funds, on counterfeit short trading. Um, and it's just crazy that this was allowed and is continued to be allowed today after we saw that blatant activity um, on, on Thursday there. So, game plan going into next week. Diamond hands, buy and hold. The more pressure we put on this stock, the more gamma squeezes we're going to get, which means it's going to trigger more short squeezes. And that, what that means is your bankroll is going to get even bigger. This 1,200% in a couple days is going to be nothing. It's going to look like peanuts if this plays out how I think it is going to play. Guys, this is not financial advice. This is my personal opinion. Uh, but if you guys take this trade, let me know how it goes because I'm with you all the way. My minimum price, $10,000 to sell. $10,000 per share. Exciting times, guys. This is never going to happen again. This trade is going to change a lot of people's lives. Super excited to move into next week. Once again, this is Mitch from Dumb Money Day Trading. I don't even know how long this video went. I just kept on going on and on and on. Very, very unprecedented times here. This is not going to happen again in our lifetime. I've never seen this in my entire lifetime. <sighs> I'll see you guys tomorrow. All right. Take care for now, guys. This is Mitch from Dumb Money signing off.